Another example of taking risks was in 2002, I went to Memphis in the United States to challenge Mike Tyson. He was due to have a world, world title match in that city against Lennox Lewis, the British champion. And in the run-up to that fight, and indeed many previous fights, Mike Tyson had said a lot of very homophobic things. He'd baited his opponents with homophobia. He'd also, of course, at that stage, been on record about abusing women in relationships. So it was the twin issues of misogyny and homophobia. Um, now, of course, taking on Mike Tyson, for a skinny little guy like me, is <laughs> not exactly an equal contest. And I was very nervous about what might happen. You know, you know a punch from Mike Tyson could have killed me. Um, but I thought, well, let's hope he's reasonably level-headed and can perhaps at least be mindful that there are going to be cameras there and it probably, you know, bashing a peaceful protester is not the best PR move. So what I did was, I went to Memphis and of course my, my, my initial reaction was, how am I going to get in a situation where I can approach him? So I reasoned, well, in the run-up to the World Title fight, He's got to be going for training. He's got to be doing gym workouts somewhere in the radius around Memphis. I did a bit of research and identified several gyms, um, three of which were in the part of the city where a news report said he was staying. So I reasoned it had to be one of these gyms. So it was the 650 gym, um, and I managed to persuade two local LGBT activists to join me and we lay in wait on a Sunday morning, the Sunday morning before the title fight, outside the 650 gym. We waited and waited and waited. And I can tell you, we were all so, so nervous. We thought, if Tyson doesn't bash us, probably his mind as will. But there were TV crews there, so we thought, well, maybe that will be protection. So eventually, a big fleet of black SUV vehicles pulls up, and out steps Mike Tyson. So me and my two colleagues rushed over to him, holding up signs, I can't remember what they were, something like, stop Mike Tyson, stop your homophobia, stop your sexism. Um, and I challenged him face to face. Um, you know, why are you using homophobia as a weapon in sport? Um, he was completely taken aback. Um, and then his first reaction was to get his fist and he raised his fist and I thought, uh-oh. But then he suddenly, he had second thoughts and he put down his fist. Um, and we began a dialogue. And what was really interesting was how stridently and passionately he said, I'm not homophobic. And I said, well, these are the things you've said. They are homophobic. His response was, well, yeah, I said them. I didn't really mean them. I was just trying to wind him up. Just to, I'm just trying to wind up my opponent. I don't really mean it. Well, I said, you know, you would not like it if a white boxer used racism to wind up you. That would be totally unacceptable. So we had this animated dialogue, and in the end I said to him, look, if you're not homophobic, prove it by making a statement against LGBT discrimination. And to his great credit, Mike Tyson turned to the cameras and said something like, I oppose discrimination against gay people. Bravo! No other boxer before or since has ever said that, as far as I know. Well, I think there are a couple of gay boxers who have come out since then, but um, you know, in terms of the big names of, of straight boxers, I can't remember any other, camp, any other boxer doing that. Not even Lennox Lewis, who'd been the victim of this homophobia. So that was a win. And then he sort of gave me a big hug, and I, was, I thought, this is going to be a crusher. But it, was, <laughs> but it was a warm embrace. And then he, as he parted to go inside the gym, he shook my hand, and I expected my hand to come out mangled and crushed into little pieces. But it was a big, fleshy, warm, gentle handshake. I thought, well, maybe today we've given him something to think about. Maybe... He won't be homophobic in the future. 
And I can't say that he never ever again said anything homophobic, but certainly the incidents that I heard about, I hadn't heard of any after that. So maybe we did get him to pause and think. 